Every day, from Monday to Saturday, more than 24 million people work to maintain the socialist machine of North Korea. This is the present-day result of a unique political experiment that's been running for almost 70 years. It's all at the expense of an isolated and subjugated people, or as those we spoke to during our visit prefer to say, a people protected from the outside world by the leader. The son of Korea is how the great generals are referred to in children's songs. Kim Jong-un's exact age is a mystery, even to North Koreans. Like his father and grandfather before him, the young general is head of state in a country at war. A country with a growing economy. And a country which, however cautiously, is gradually opening its doors to investors and tourists but at the same time remains inaccessible and mysterious. Pyongyang, the flatland, is the center of power for the North Korean regime. The capital city and the face of the republic it's where we'll spend most of our time in this almost completely unknown and isolated country. A few months ago, biology professor Kim Chol Ho was given the keys to his new home. He now lives in one of the most modern buildings in Pyongyang. TV, television, at the entrance is a poster reminding citizens that at any time they should always be ready to show respect to the great leader, Kim Jong-un. Inside, we're given a warm welcome by the proud owners of the large 240-meter flat a gift from the marshal to his indispensable scientists. It's an incentive to work harder and more quickly, says Chol Ho. A sickle, a hammer and a brush in the center of Pyongyang symbolize the solidity of the country's only political party to hold power. Almost 90% of all members of parliament belong to the Workers' Party. The remaining seats are taken by representatives of the dependent Social Democratic and Chondoist parties that have no real power. There's also a handful of so-called independent members. The last parliamentary election was held earlier this year. 
Kim Jong-un was re-elected as a deputy with 100% of the vote from the same assembly that chose him as the country's supreme leader. That was two weeks after the death of his father, Kim Jong-il, eternal general secretary of the Workers' Party. Kuno Kim Kyo's son is a farmer just like his father before him. He's worked at the Miko Collective Farm for eight years. He joined after leaving the army where 10 years of service is obligatory for almost all men. So 하니까 진짜 더 풀을 것도 없고 우리 농사 일 한다 그러지만은 실질적으로 농사꾼 농사꾼들 같지 않습니다. 실질적으로 미국 내 사람들 다 봐도 알겠지만 그래서 그야말로 노동이 노래가 되고 행복이 되고 있습니다. 무조건적인 Working to uphold the system and achieving goals set by the government is a question of honor. Agricultural workers are constantly reminded of this by propaganda that's widely distributed throughout the collective farms. Loudspeakers broadcasting rousing music and speeches call farmers to their daily work. Students with revolutionary flags and flowers take turns to boost the farmers' morale. The slogans encourage everyone to be patriots and surpass the entire world. Or at least to follow the great marshal's example and contribute as much effort as he does to ensure that his people thrive. Certificates on the offices of this glass factory proudly honor employees of the month and year. Last month, Oh Yong Nam broke not a single sheet of plate glass while packing. He considers that an achievement. 김정은 Students pursue the same goals. At least that's what's said in front of a camera. To serve my country, says Ji Chong Hyuk. In this case, he's talking about technological research. He's on his way to study at the country's main library. The Grand People's Study Palace. 그 길에 어 나도 한몫 하기 위해서 지금 정보 기술을 많이 공부하고 앞으로 세계를 앞다하게서 공부하고 있습니다. <목소리> 